teach you a little bit of something about your shoulder and its anatomy and why you could possibly be experiencing shoulder pain. How many of you here have had physical therapy before? Yep, all right, good. Thank you for keeping me in business. Um, we're happy to announce we just opened a new physical therapy clinic in the Grove Medical Building on Hampton Street, which you could almost walk to. We've been there for about a year now, so we thought we'd introduce ourselves and show our faces. Um, it, it seems like a good location if any of you need physical therapy. How many of you have had physical therapy for your shoulder? That's quite a few. Wow. Or your back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two of the most common places in the body to have yeah. pain. Mm -hmm. So feel free. I, I don't mind this being a little interactive. If you want to stop and raise your hand, I'm happy to answer questions. If you want to wait till the end, there'll be time for questions then as well. But thank you for having us, and happy Wednesday, I believe, March 12th. Already? So most common reasons for shoulder pain. I'm going to start with one of the most common reasons, which is a rotator cuff tear. Rotator cuff are is four muscles in your shoulder that help, obviously, hence the name, rotate, right? So they rotate your arm, but they also stabilize your arm. So when you go to do things like reach, put on your jacket, um, tuck your pants in maybe, it helps stabilize your shoulder. So if something's wrong with your rotator cuff, you may experience shoulder pain because your shoulder is not stable. So that's just a visual of the shoulder without any muscles on it. And I never really like to say shoulder. I like to say shoulder complex because your shoulder is made up of a lot of things. Your shoulder blade, which some people might call their wing bone. Your shoulder itself, which is your arm, in the top of it inserts into the socket of the wing bone, the shoulder blade. And then your, your collarbone, your clavicle in the front. All those three things have to be working together for your shoulder to be healthy. So again, the arm, the shoulder blade, and the collarbone. And then there's multiple, multiple ligaments that I wouldn't have enough time to go through that actually help with your stability of your shoulder. So. That's a picture basically of your rotator cuff muscle, looking at it in the front and looking at it in the back. So your rotator cuff is made up of four muscles. We call we use the acronym SITS, S-I-T-S. The first one is the supraspinatus. I will not quiz you on that later, I promise. But the supraspinatus helps you do this. Lifts your arm out to the side. The next muscle, I, is the infraspinatus and that would help you do something like this. You're reaching for your, your coat, putting your coat on, reaching behind you, maybe you're reaching to shut off your alarm clock. That muscle assists with that. Your next, the T in sits is Terry's minor. That also does a similar action of rotating your arm. And then your subscapularis rotates your arm inwards. So tucking your shirt in, maybe scratching your back, things of that sort. If there's something wrong with that muscle, you may have some pain. So again, no quiz. Those are the four muscles of your rotator cuff. So those, all those four muscles together have to work. They all have to be healthy for the shoulder to work. That just shows an example of a torn rotator cuff. You can see right here. So that supraspinatus, the first muscle I talked about that does this, is not connected to your arm, you're going to end up doing this. You're going to end up using this big, big muscle up here in your neck, which is called your upper trapezius, to actually help lift your arm, because your, your rotator cuff is not working. And people do that, and then people start to experience, people start to experience neck pain, because they're overworking that muscle, which comes up and actually inserts up into the base of your skull. So if you keep working that muscle and working that muscle, it gets short and tight and it compresses your, your cervical spine, your neck. So you can end up with problems like numbness and tingling in your arm, pain in your hand, pain in your neck, pain in the middle of your back, even just from a rotator cuff tear. So how would you know if you had a rotator cuff tear? That's a good question. So the most common symptoms are, but not completely limited to this list, are your inability to lift your arm. 
So you, you see somebody going like this. Unable to reach behind your back. It's really painful to, to go and maybe try to tuck your clothing in. Pain in your arm. So your rotator cuff is here, but most people when they have a rotator cuff problem will complain of pain here. It's a referred pain. Like they say, if you have a heart problem, you may feel it in your left shoulder. The rotator cuff, most people feel here. And they'll say, oh, maybe it's my bicep muscle. But it's actually coming from your rotator cuff. So that's really important to know. Yeah. That sometimes the source of the, the, where you feel the pain isn't actually the source of the pain. And then unable to lie down and sleep on that shoulder is another huge complaint we see with rotator cuff problems. So those are probably the four most popular complaints we see during an evaluation that we're thinking, hmm, we can't diagnose a rotator cuff tear, but we can think it could be torn, but maybe it's a tendonitis or bursitis, which Melissa's gonna talk about in the second half of this. So the most commonly torn muscle is the one that brings your arm out to the side, the supraspinatus, and the reason that is, is, is I'm just gonna go back is the supraspinatus runs underneath this little bone. And what happens over time is we start to look like this, right? We start to get a little rounded. We as a society love to sit. And now even more, we love to use computers. So you start to close down that space in where that muscle runs under the bone and you can actually tear your rotator cuff without even injuring yourself. Just over the years, that loss of alignment causes decreased vascularity to the muscle, and it will start to what we call fray, and then it could just tear. So you don't have to fall down. You don't have to be lifting something heavy. It can just spontaneously happen. Kind of a bummer. <laughs> So ultimately, click. How do you know you have a rotator cuff tear? Click. You need to get diagnostic testing, which is an MRI most likely. But it's gonna be okay. So, one. Oh, how'd that get in there? That's my favorite place on earth. Cancun, Mexico. That's a picture from my last vacation. View from my hotel room. You can leave that right there. So can, can people live with rotator cuff tears? Absolutely. You have other muscles that perform the same action. So if you can only reach to here, you can still function. I mean, that's ultimately your decision in your doctors. If you want to try living with it, we can treat it. Even though it's torn, if you're not going to have surgery, we strengthen all the other muscles around it so you can still function. But ultimately, you have to get diagnostic testing to know absolutely that you have a rotator cuff tear. So, either, if there's questions now, Melissa's going to go into a couple other diagnoses that are very common in the shoulder. So I'm going to pass it off to her. Okay. So there's other causes of shoulder impingement: tendonitis, bursitis, bone spurs, and acromion problems. So first, so with the tendonitis, so there's actually two main tendons that are affected. And to the left, this is a normal shoulder, okay, that's not inflamed. To the right is, so this lower circle, this is the bicipital tendon, okay, it runs right in the front of your shoulder, and it attaches the bicep or the upper arm muscle to the bone. That can get inflamed. Here, like Lynn said, this is the supraspinatus muscle here, and that tendon can also get inflamed as well, okay? So when you have tendonitis, you, it's more localized pain. You have pain in the front, if usually if it's bicipital tendon, tendonitis, and if it's um, uh, a supraspinatus tendonitis or bursitis, you have pain in the upper um, lateral part of the arm. So here, so with bursitis, so bursa, so that blue, um, 
that versus in all of our joints, and it acts as a, as a lubricator, okay? So that way our joints, you know, can move and slide and, and glide. So sometimes the bursa will get inflamed, okay? And you can see the acromion is part of the scapula, so it actually, so the, the wing, the shoulder blade is in the back, the acromion goes around the front, so it's right here, okay? So there's a lot of areas in this, subacromial space, okay, right between that acromion and the, the, the head of the humerus, okay? You have the tendons, the bursa, so if there's inflammation, you're gonna have pain with, and it's similar, but you know, when you reach out to the side, you get that sharp pain. When you're reaching high overhead, you get the sharp pain. Um, sometimes, too, there'll be like a painful arc, what we call it, where you don't have pain right now, and then you have a pain, painful arc here that clears. So that also can give us more information that it could be a tendonitis or bursitis. Also, bone spurs. So again, the acromion is, is, here's a nice, clean, smooth acromion, okay, in a nice, um, you know, normal-sized bursa to the right. So see how the bone spurs are basically just calcium deposits that over time um, <coughs> lay down in the bone. It's just a way of our body to, if there is chronic inflammation, um, to try to heal itself. Well, it becomes jagged like teeth. And you can see that, that a bone spur could either inflame the bursa, like this one is. It, um, it could inflame the tendon. But over time, sometimes it can also fray that, the rotator cuff of the supraspinatus, okay? So that's why it's important, if you're having shoulder pain, um, you know, to address it, talk to the doctor, so that way you could possibly prevent, you know, further injury. So, physical therapy evaluation, what are we looking at? So it's really important that we get a good history because that tells us, you know, what, you know, could be the cause of your pain. So how long has this been going on? Did you have an injury or did it just happen on its own? You know, was it insidious? Um, you know, has it gotten progressively worse? In function, you know, what are you having trouble with? Reaching high, reaching out to the side, reaching behind your back? You know, are you unable to um, hook your bra? That's, you know, um, usually um, tough to do. We look at range of motion, so we're seeing actively what you can do on your own. So it all the shoulder it's a ball and socket joint, so there's a lot of planes of motion. So it's important that, you know, with therapy that we make sure that you have good range of motion in all the planes of motion, okay? So we looked at active motion, we looked at passive motion to see so actively we're looking at the strength of the muscles, okay? But when we move the shoulder, we're looking at how the joint is moving, and we can feel uh, tension, and it's important sometimes when you've had chronic pain, <coughs> sometimes you'll get a frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis. What happens with that is over time, from not moving the shoulder in certain motions, it might, might even be one, like usually this one is an emotion you do very often, over time, the, because the joint isn't rolling and gliding and spinning like it should, scar tissue forms in the joint capsule, and then it gets really tight and painful. We also look at strength, so we're looking at the strength of the whole you know, upper arm, um, shoulder, bicep, rotator cuff, but also um, the periscap muscles, the muscles between the shoulder blades. We also look at the quality of the motion, like Lynn described, a lot of times people will, you know, for kind of seeing that you're, there's a lot of compensation, the scapulohumeral rhythm isn't good, then that's a sign that there's um, an issue there. And also posture, I mean, we see this like all day. Um, and so, you know, if you have rounded shoulders, forward head, that's gonna decrease that joint space and you to have like a, an impingement or a bursitis or tendonitis or a rotator cuff issue. So treatment. So concerning treatment, of course, is physical therapy. Also steroid injections, you might have heard cortisone. Okay, so with the shoulder, they usually go from the back and they use, um, so cortisone is an anti-inflammatory, so that 
can help with um, inflammation, so if there's a bursitis or tendonitis. Um, I've had patients where you know they get one injection and they feel great for months or even years, and others where it doesn't help. So um, you know, it really does vary. Um, but there is a limit to how many injections. Like usually, like max three injections per year per, per area. Okay, so uh, more than that, it, it's not good for the joint. Medication can help too. Anti-inflammatory, pain med, um, and the muscle relaxer can help. You know, if, if the pain is, is severe. And then if that doesn't work, um, see surgery. You know, after you've had diagnostic imaging done. So just some examples of exercises. So basically, again, you may have a tear, you may have chronic inflammation, but physical therapy can help get you as pain-free as possible, get you, you know, as functional as possible. The first thing that we look at is increasing range of motion. So, and again, in all the planes of motion. So stretches, um, we may do manual stretching. Can you do stretches at home? Then we work on active assist range of motion where either gravity, the other hand or a stick is helping um, to, to get the, the normal motion again. We also um, work to increase strength. So we do exercises um, sometimes with bands, with, with weights, sometimes just gravity, you know, is enough in the beginning. And then we do have, um, you know, weights, a life fitness machine too, um, to progress too. But again, we're working on strengthening the scap muscles as well as the rotator cuff, so a rotation, um, and you know, in a whole shoulder complex. So again, we just let pain be the guide, okay? So whatever you can tolerate, we'll start at, and then we'll keep progressing. So here are just some examples um, of good in a pair posture. So here, so balanced posture, you want your ear to bisect your shoulder, okay? And there should be a slight lordosis in the neck, and then, then it goes out a bit, and then a lumbar lordosis, okay? So that it, you shouldn't have a straight, a straight spine, okay? So there should be a slight degree of curvature in those areas. Uh, what happens a lot is with forward head, some people have either a flat back or a rounded back, so with forward head, you end up getting um, tight pec muscle in the front, which again will just tighten um, and compress things in the front and pinch the area. And then the upper back muscles and the scap muscles are, are weak too from being in that round, rounded posture. But through exercise, can help to um, correct the alignment of the spine. So sometimes we'll use modalities. Um, electrical stimulation can be helpful, so the top picture shows that. We apply either one or two um, electrodes around the shoulder, and you feel like a pulsation, and that can help decrease pain and inflammation. And sometimes we, we combine it with ice or heat. Also ultrasound, so in the picture below, um, there's a sound head and there's a crystal inside that vibrates and produces sound waves. And with gel as a medium, that can help promote healing to the area. So it's either deep heat, or we could do it without heat, depending on if it's an acute or chronic injury. Iontophoresis, that's the way to drive, I and mean, we're not giving patient shots, but it's a way to drive medication into the skin. So usually dexamethasone is, is used, and using electronic um, charges, that's how the medication gets driven into the skin. So obviously we need a script from the doctor and you need to pick up that medication at the pharmacy and bring it in with you. And also, you know, ice and heat could be used. So ice for inflammation, heat if there's like joint stiffness or muscle spasm. So manual treatment, we may do massage too, because um, that can help it up the joint and the muscles, so soft to, uh, and deep tissue massage. Also, a fascial release can help. If you are um, very tender, that can be very helpful. And joint mobilizations, uh, like the picture, um, this is just a way to kind of loosen up the joint. Um, if you're really stiff in certain areas, kind of do some manual treatment to loosen up the joint, so that way you'll get more more flexibility. 
Okay. Does anyone have any questions about rotator cuff issues or impingement? We're that good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I just want to make clear that if you're feeling these symptoms, it does not mean you have a tear. You could have an impingement and you could have an imbalance of your muscles. And that's what we're trained to evaluate and correct. And we see a lot of success with strengthening and stretching and people coming in in severe, severe pain and leaving with absolutely no pain. So it's very important that you address your pain when you first get it instead of kind of saying, oh, well, it comes and goes and oh, you know, and waiting until you may absolutely have something that we can't fix. Um, so again, just through exercises, the modalities Melissa was describing, some of, the, some of these pains, if it's a tendonitis or bursitis, will go away with conservative treatment. Um, and we have, like she said, different types of tools depending on every body is different, so every body is gonna describe, um, treat, we're gonna treat you differently depending on your symptoms and your pain levels and pain tolerance, so. Yes. If you have a pinched nerve, will that now show where the pain is coming from too? If you have a pinched nerve in your neck? No. Yes, so that's very important. During our evaluation, what we do is we try to clear the neck. So I will take you through some neck motions, and if I can cause the pain by moving your neck in certain ways, then I'm gonna probably assume the pain in your shoulder is coming from your neck, and I'm gonna treat your neck. And then over the next two or three weeks, if we're finding, you know what, the shoulders are getting better, let's take a closer look. But we're always looking at the joint above and even below. Shoulder pain, a lot of people will also have elbow pain with shoulder pain because if they're not using their shoulder up here because it hurts, they're going like this and they're constantly using their wrist, which your wrist muscles attach to your elbow. So elbow and shoulder pain go hand in hand as well. Another question? I have a problem. And the only time I find out the problem was I went to open up the refrigerator and I just pull it this way and the pain was so severe here. I had it to go like this and my it was stuck. My arm was completely stuck on my here on this side, just like this for about half an hour. I could not move it out at all. It was just stuck in there. Yeah, it sounds like you could have sprained your shoulder, your rotator cuff, which a sprain can heal. Um, but if the pain yeah. continues after, you know, two to three weeks or doesn't get better over a month, then you should definitely. Yeah, then it went away, but sometimes when I do, when I do that, my pain is from here to here only. Mm -hmm. If I touch it hard here, I can feel it. Right, so if, your, if you sprained your rotator cuff, it would probably hurt to lift your arm. Because okay. remember I talked about stability, so if, if you're, Melissa said that the, rotate, the shoulder's a ball and socket, right? So this is your ball, mm -hmm. the top of your arm, mm -hmm. and it inserts into a socket. So as you lift your arm, your rotator cuff rotates it, but it also presses it down in the socket so it doesn't hit that little hook bone we talked about. So if it's inflamed, if you have inflammation around a muscle, it will shut down. It doesn't mean that it's weak, it just will shut down from the inflammation. So when you go to lift your arm, it bumps up against your acromion bone, and you say, ow, oof, yeah. and you bring it down and it's okay. Uh -huh. And then you go about your day, and then you go to do something else, and you say, oh, ow. And you, you rub your shoulder like this, that's very common. So what we do is when you come in for your evaluation, we evaluate all that, we check your neck, which was a great question, and we try to work on the, decreasing the inflammation first, and then we start to strengthen and stretch what's weak or tight or you know, not working well. So you could have just sprained your muscle. Yeah, but that, I said like a couple of days before, two, three days before, I used a three package of 28 bars of water, mm -hmm. twice. So I see, I thought it could have been that, but then yeah. one day that's what happened. I went to open the refrigerator, oh, and then it just fell stuck over here. Very common. Sometimes when I'm going to put the jacket and put my sleeve on it, I have to do this one first, then do this one, because if I do this one, then the other one, it hurts, and I can't do it. Yeah, so very, 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 very common, and I'm sure Melissa will agree to this, is we hear those complaints a lot. 
So you guys can try this if you want. You don't have to. But if you sit like this and you try to lift your shoulders, that's about how far I can go. So if you sit like this and you're nice and aligned, I can lift my shoulders this far. So sometimes it's just a weakness back here from using the computer, from sitting in your recliner. Um, this back side gets really, really weak and then you get really, really tight in here. So now you're not really aligned well. Very common. And even the teenage population now, because of texting, we, we see it a lot. Those teenagers on their phones all the time. <laughs> so we stretch this in the front and we strengthen this in the back and then you have a better alignment and your shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. Sometimes it's that successful. Yeah. So we had a really tough winter with a lot of snow shoveling and um, along with a lot of other people, I've had physical therapy on my shoulder and I'm still doing strengthening things. After some of that shoveling, I felt a difference and maybe a just a twinge or a, a slight weakness. How can we shovel snow without hurting ourselves? <laughs> well, good, good question. That's a tough answer. Well, well, this well, is the, the last week that we need to deal with it. snow and ice. Um, so, firstly, I mean, right, there's things that you just have to do, right? You have to shovel, you have to. So, first, you know, if, if you get a twinge, if you feel sore, you might have strained or inflamed the shoulder shoveling, throw some ice on right away, okay? Because until, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's just so superficial, you know, the inflammation. I mean, I don't have to poke very hard, if, you know, if it's not inflamed. It's, so that's why ice is so effective. It's not, you know, if it's a tendon ice per se, it's very um, localized, okay? So throw some ice on, you know, a bag of peas or a gel pack in a, um, you know, in a couple of pillowcases, drape it off the, over the shoulder, do that for 10 or 15 minutes, okay? So that's what you do if you've overdone it, okay? So it may be, you can ice up to four times a day. Just wait an hour to reapply it. As far as body mechanics, you don't, you want to try to avoid repetitive kind of reaching too. So I tell people, you know, when you're shoveling or vacuuming or sweeping, instead of doing a lot of this, you know, so you're just doing a lot of, um, you know, reaching and extension, try to keep your upper arm at your side, okay? And you want to use your stronger hip muscles and your quads, you know, so it's, so a lot of weight shifting, you know, when you're vacuuming or sweeping. So that way you're using your strong, your power muscles and not your spine. Because your spine and your, and the scap and the shoulder, I mean, those muscles just, you know, are, are thin and they won't, uh, they're just made, not made to do, you know, heavy, heavy lifting if you're not used to it or even if you are. Um, so technique is, is good too, okay? So that way if you keep your arms at your side and use good body mechanics, that, that can help prevent um, pain or inflammation. Yes? Pam, uh, I'm, I'm somebody that falls a lot, okay? Now, this last time I fell backwards. And backwards, now I sleep all night and I wake up and my shoulders are killing me. And then after I get along a little bit, I mean, it goes away. I can, I can I don't know if I can get my arms up or, or what, but I, I'm telling you, I wake up from the pain from my shoulders. I wake up two or three times a night with them. Just, when, when was the fall? Oh, maybe about a month ago. A month ago. You know, I mean, something like that, when, when you've had a traumatic issue, like a fall, and it's been a month, and it's still, I mean, it's affecting your sleep, you know, when you're not even using the arm, you know, it's, I, I would call your doctor and just say, you know, I, I had this fall, can you just take a look at it, I mean, maybe they would do an x-ray just to make sure there's nothing else going on, um, maybe, you know, medication or physical therapy just to loosen up, but, you know, when, we, when you've had that trauma, it, if it doesn't go away in a couple days, a couple weeks, and it may just be, you know, it's made like soreness, you know, obviously, you know, just falling back, but, I mean, if it's been a month, I mean, emotions, you know, at least that way, is 
not full. It's pretty good, but the uh, you know the other ways it might be you know. Most of the time, along with the shoulders, I'll get the pain down by my knee. Mm -hmm. If I if I get up, in other words, I get up. I got to get use the cane to get up and grab anything that's along the way to balance myself, and then all of a sudden. In physical therapy too, I mean, I actually also do vestibular rehab and balance and, you know, and, and work with patients who have balance issues. This has been for, for years, when I, from when I was in surgery, the parachute jump and stuff like that. Uh, but still strengthening the legs and the hips can help prevent falls because God forbid that we use uh, My worst fall when I start, I spin. I, okay, oh, you know what I'm talking about. I spin around and I can't control it. I know, I, I, I do this. I do this in the rehab, so. I hit the, I hit the ground. I mean, I can go forward, I can use it and do something like that, but every night I wake up with the sore things. Now, right now, I can do anything. I mean, a little bit goes into the neck when I do this, but, you know. I mean, I would talk to the doctor about, you know, the shoulder issues. And again, physical therapy can help with spinning and dizziness, yeah, they get, too. They get tired of me because this was happening every month for me. I mean, he needs to tell me, you know, he's a PD, you don't bounce anymore. Oh, well, was, was so talk that. to the doctor and maybe get some therapy, too. I think it will help him definitely prevent falls. I mean, that's what I was just scared of. I wrote a cup. But I mean, so far I can, I can lift and I can do everything else. Mm -hmm. I can shovel snow if I have to. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. Like, you know. Well, good. But if it doesn't get better, I, I would call the doctor. Okay, any other questions? So the only way to diagnose exactly what you have has to be an MRI. Right. That's. The MRI is looking at soft tissue structures, um, the, the muscles, the tendons. So that's, I mean, actually it's looking at the bones. So we can see if there's some de degeneration or we can see if there's um, type three or four, um, like that hook of the acromion, you can see that on the x-ray. But the MRI is looking at the rotator cuff and the tendons and the bursa. So they can see that. Go to your doctor and explain to him that you decide from there. Yes, your primary care, you know, may um, order the the imaging, and then depending on the results, they may send you to a shoulder specialist, an orthopedist, depending on, or or maybe just therapy. Sometimes you know they'll send you to therapy first for a month because the the orthopedist is once a conservative approach as well. You know, they send you to therapy for a month or two. If it doesn't get better, you follow up with the doctor, okay? And then you, you go to plan B. Now, last year I went to your facility on Gold Star Boulevard, but it actually, once I went to my primary care doctor, it took a month for an appointment. Is that still happening? Well, that's why we opened another site <laughs> right down here in Auburn. Okay. Because um, it was like, great, you know, I lived with it for a month and then decided to go to the doctor. Now it's another month. Then I had the PT. Then they go, no, there's nothing more we can do for you. So then I had to go see um, whatever, the doctor that gives the cortisone shot. Mm -hmm. I had to wait a month for his appointment. Right, right. Yeah, that can be frustrating at times, but... Um, and at that point, they finally took an x-ray, and I thought, well, that's really bizarre. <laughs> Why would, after all that time, would they finally take an x-ray? Yeah, the, the system can be bizarre sometimes, but, um, yeah, we don't find that we have a month wait time. I'm not sure. Maybe there was some indication, or who knows, but we sometimes have appointments the next day. Really? Um, I wasn't yeah, that lucky. Definitely no more than a week. Unless you have a real tight, tight schedule where you need a 7.30 a.m. or a 6 p.m., those slots tend to get taken. No, my schedule pretty, was free. Pretty quickly. But yeah, so we, it's, it's just Melissa and I there. Um, we're on the ground level of the Grove Medical Building, if you've driven by it in the back of the building. Um, we take every insurance, so that's about it. So if you're lucky, I found this funny comic. You've got a rare condition, it's called good health. Frankly, we don't know how to treat it. So we, hope, we wish you all good health, but hopefully you learned maybe a little bit 
that could be helpful for yourself or maybe a family member or a friend that's having some of these problems um, that might seek out treatment that wouldn't normally. But we thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. And we'll be here if anybody else wants to come up with any other questions. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.